Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time to go through the pages of the National Dailies with Nancy. So we are glad to say we're joined this morning by seasoned uh, public affairs analyst Opunabo in Kotara. Mr. Kotara, it's nice to have you join us for a brand new week on the breakfast. Good morning, Kofi. Good morning, Nigeria. All right, fantastic. Uh, we'll start things uh, with the uh, leadership newspaper this morning. And of course, the headlines coming on the front page of that paper. Uh, it gives it gives a pr premium or premium place uh, to the security situation in the country. Uh, with this headline, alleged security threat, please place area commanders, DPOs on red alert in Lagos. The writers to that, bandit scale three policemen, 25 others in Kogi. Sakwato, four informants arrested over Kujay jailbreak, save Nigeria from collapse, Northern Christians urge PMB. 2023, 10 female governorship candidates, 24 running mates emerge. Nationwide strike looms as resident doctors give FG two-week ultimatum. NDLEA intercepts 1.3 billion Naira drugs in Lagos Airport. APC wants Nigerians in diaspora to vote in 2023. Interest rate hike crashes stock market investments by 782 billion naira. That's really unfortunate. Interest rate hike crashes stock market investments by 782 billion naira. Commonwealth Games. Rafiatu Lawal wins Nigeria's second gold sets new record uh, pdp governors reach out to wk as obasanjo tambo meet those are headlines on the front page of the leadership and over to the punch this morning the big one there voter registration and the paper are going with uh, the deadline or the end of uh, the cvr suspension rather of the cvr yesterday it says a stranded applicants lament seek extension Einek adamant Stranded applicants lament, seek extension, INEC adamant. The writers to that, thousands miss registration in Enugu Ogun Plateau, blame officials, uh, don't disenfranchise eligible Nigerians, PDP tells a commission. Voter registration ended on Sunday, no more extension, says INEC. Uh, spare thought for those thousands who miss registration in Enugu uh, Ogun Plateau. Uh, of course, uh, this has been an exercise on for months, and one would wonder why we're waiting to the last minute before going out uh, to get registered. At the top of that front page, Nigeria needs leader who can take tough decisions. Oshomole, of course, uh, when you see Oshomole, I'm sure uh, our guests will be able to put one and two together. NNPC remits $2.7 billion to CBN in six months. And National Assembly proposes 63 new varsities, ex experts kick. Wife of Nigerian killed in Italy demands justice. Terror, Lagos police or Moteku on alert. And FG urges states to fund housing scheme. Headlines on the front page of The Punch. And over to the nation this morning. Planned attack, security on the alert in Lagos, Enugu. Uh, this also the paper, the nation giving uh, attention, a uh, premium attention to the uh, the security alert on Lagos, Enugu, and other parts uh, of the country. Now the writer to that headline: Bandits now in Ogun, Oshun Forest, fleeing terrorists, regrouping in Nasarawa, says Sule. Really worrying. At the top of that front page, Nigeria, others plead with G20 for debt service extension. Nigeria, others plead with G20 for death service extension. 2023, we will back power shift to the south, says Pandev. We'll back power shift to the south, says Pandev. And the union criticizes government takeover of five discos. 18 fear dead or killed in bandits' vigilance group clash. And at the bottom of that front page, report CBN won't devalue Naira. New NNPC states face cash crunch. And some of the headlines on the front page of the nation. Let's take a final one this time. The Guardian on Monday 
And uh, the Guardian, you know, takes a departure from what the other papers are, are, are covering this morning. We we'll look at the situation in Nigeria's aviation sector. With this big story, local aviation risks collapse as only 38 of 90 planes are active. Local aviation risks collapse as only 38 of 90 airplanes are active. The riders too, that quite a number of riders there, Airpeace, Arik, Asman, operate at 38.8% fleet capacity. Hurdles for air travelers as over 30% are underserved. Operators blame lack of foreign exchange or lack of foreign exchange rather for maintenance. Uh, Syrica's aviation roadmap fails to deliver on promises seven years on. The industry needs new policy direction to survive, stakeholders say. And only four of 22 airports are viable, turn others to shopping malls, Bernard tells FG. That's a funny one if you look at it that way. More from The Guardian. Fresh facts reveal NNPC's $2.7 billion remittance to its CBN accounts in six months. Uh, one is wondering when's, from whence came Emir Fili's accusation that non-remittance by the NNPC is what is affecting the fortunes of the Naira negatively. Nigeria confirms 15 new cases of monkeypox in 10 states. Discos reject takeover claim FG owing 100 billion Naira. Discos reject takeover claim FG owing 100 billion Naira. Uh, Wiki meets four PDP governors, political allies in Abuja. All right, this is a departure from the visit to his Port Harcourt uh, uh, estate. Insecurity, police on red alert in Lagos. Iswap claims Zuma rock attack on soldiers. Uh, some of the headlines on the front page of The Guardian. We'll stick with that paper as we welcome, once again, Opunabo Inkotaria. Uh, Miss Inkotaria, let's, let's uh, start with the big coverage by The Guardian on Nigeria's aviation sector. It's quite a, a very gloomy uh, picture, the newspaper's report is, is, is painting. Only 38 of 90 planes are active as we speak. Yes, uh, as worrisome as it is, uh, it is not strange. I mean, the aviation sector in this country has always been a mess in one problem or the other, uh, both from the national carriers to the owned by uh, individuals. Now, when you talk of the national carriers, you're talking of uh, poor management. Uh, that led to the grounding of a lot of our planes. And when you talk of um, those owned by private individuals, could you let me quickly correct something? In Kotaria, there is H at the end of the area. Oh, wow. Sincere apologies uh, for that. Sincere apologies. So, we'll fix that, yes. Yeah, Thank no, you. that's okay. Thank you. Yeah. So when you talk of the private, uh, in, in the private airlines, we all know what their problems are. It has to do mostly with uh, the cost of the uh, plane fuel. What is that thing called? JD1 or something? Yeah. That has always been their problem. You know, when these uh, prices go up, as management or non-management of the refineries, we explore the crude which I've always condemned because uh, it suffers from ethics of reason and poverty of logic. I, I can't comprehend how a country that is blessed with so much oil resources, and uh, we have refineries here in this country that operated at optimal capacity, that have been grounded intentionally by a cabal, not just this government, a cabal, for some selfish reasons in order to make money. So we export these things, uh, the group, and import the, the finished products. And so whenever you have an international oil market, of course, it's definitely going to affect the prices. I listened to, I think, the chairman of Airpeace when he said, uh, if you look at the cost of uh, the, what the passengers pay per passenger, and you look at uh, how much they make at the end of the day, you find out that even to maintain the aircraft is a problem. And don't forget, maintenance of aircraft 
is crucial. It's the most important thing because you are talking of safety. And so it's quite expensive. This is in addition to other charges, you know, uh, landing charges, gift charges, and all kinds of charges. So if, and if you increase the, the, the fare, if they become stratospheric, uh, a lot of people are not going to fly. They're going to go by road, and further endangering their lives with the terrorism that has taken over the country. So as a result of that, a lot of people, because of the hike in price in the fares, a lot of persons are not traveling. And the only way these persons make their money is when you travel, when you have, they have passengers. The, the turnover is, is, a, is a function of the number of passengers you carry in a day and the number of flights you make in a day. So if a plane, for example, LP, doesn't fly, uh, if it ought to fly two, three times a day to make money, and it flies once in two days, how is it going to pay its crew? How is it going to uh, maintain the aircraft? And these people are in business to also make money. So how are they going to make the money? So the best thing, rather than uh, run into a loss, the best thing is to ground the plane. And that is why out of about 90, you have about 30 something. You know, it, it boils down to poor, poor leadership. Uh, when I mean leadership, I'm talking of uh, national leadership, talking of the presidency, or the president, so to speak. A lot of people will say, you keep talking about Mr. President, you keep talking about Mr. President. The ball stops at this table. If today the issue of insecurity is contained, if today we have a robust economy, people will give the president the credit. And so whenever you have uh, ineptitude, narcissism, those sort of the president takes the claim. Like I always say to people, I say, the enos will fight. The gas is released through the anus. But when that happens, who, what, which, uh, who takes the knock? The head. When the anus will pass, you come the head. You don't come the anus. So the ball stops at the, at the table of Mr. President. And this poor management is responsible for the grounding of a lot of things. Because these best and foremost are businessmen. They are out to make profit. And if the environment is hostile to them, if they cannot make profit, if they cannot break even, then what is the point? And that is why you have a lot of this plane grounded. The bottom line is the aviation fuel. That is the bottom line. You know, they get it at uh, uh, exorbitant rates. And don't forget that if they, it doesn't dominate them, because eventually the passengers, the customers are the ones paying for it. And if the customers, if they don't have enough passengers, then they don't have any business. They don't, don't need being in business. And that is what is responsible for uh, the problems affecting the aviation, plaguing the aviation industry. Really, really a grim, a grim uh, picture right there, Opunabo in Kotaria. Um, yes, quite yes. green, quite green, quite oh, green. Indeed. Let's move over to, um, to the, uh, uh, the punch in the super rights. Um, uh, along other papers, the, it's given some space to the security situation in the country. Um, some some suspicion that there might be terror attacks in Lagos uh, and other parts of the country, in the southwest, uh, in the south south as well. Uh, it says terror. Lagos police on Moteko on alert. Um, you know, we've seen some frenzied uh, response by people out there. I saw a report even one of the papers over the weekend talking about the. Um, uh, so-called foreigners who are serving as, as cooks, as cleaners, as gate men, security guards, what we call me guard, you know, for people in Lagos and the suspicion that uh, they might be used as tools by terrorists. Uh, some of us in the media have had to try and calm people down to let people know, you know, these are people who are uh, refugees from northern Nigeria who don't have <laughs> any way of staying back home and they rush down south. But what are your thoughts on what's going on? And then the reports of, of uh, a possible terror uh, activity or terrorist activity in Lagos in particular. Well, uh, this is... Uh, this is coming in, in the punch the newspaper, by the way. It's a terrifying situation. Sorry? Yeah, please go. Okay, yes. Uh, quite tribulated, I must tell you that. Um, it is unfortunate that there is this concatenation of deaths, kidnappings, 
abductions, and so on. So the, the security situation, the insecurity in the country has assumed apocalyptic dimension. And this is occasioned by cataclysmic leadership. You know, you have a morass of leadership vacuity, a situation where you have um, a president that, as far as I'm concerned, is a long, it's on a long sojourn in the land of indiscretion, complicity, I underline that complicity and inertia amid the roaring torrents of crime and criminality in this country. The Deputy Senate President said on the floor of the House that before the Kujay deal break, I think it's Kujay deal break, that they had about 44, 42 or 44 security reports. And the federal government did nothing. And when Mr. President went to Kujay prisons, he blamed it on intel, lack of intel. But now the NDD, the, um, sorry, the DSS has, has come out to contract with that. They, they issued or they gave the federal government about 42 reports. After that, heads have not ruled. In any civilized climate, you have the minister for interior resigning. The Comptroller General of Prisons or Correction Centers or whatever they call. The problem has not been. You see, this country will always slander in the morass of policies. The issue has nothing to do with nomenclature. That's not the problem. Now you call them correctional centers. They are not correctional centers. They are correctional centers in civilized clients because people in prison go to school. They go there for reformation and what are they? Not in Nigeria. These are not correctional centers. But that's an aside. To have the controller general of prisons, permitted the secret of prisons, of prison, still in office, and nothing has happened. Remember, there was an inspector general of police. I think the one before this one, or the one before this, the present inspector general's predecessor, immediate predecessor, who was ordered to relocate to Bruno State by President Muhammad Buhari. Few months later, the president visited Bruno, only to be told that the IG never slept in Bruno for one day. What was the president's response? He was going to go back to Abuja and investigate their claims. That was the end of it. The IG retired. You have the issue of the former service chiefs. The national security advisor, the, their successors, that is the, the uh, other service chiefs after Burata and Koweirubu, came on air to say they cannot find on ground the uh, equipment, arms and ammunition that monies were located for. This service chief Buratai and his uh, uh, colleagues received this money, but nothing on ground to justify their location to the defense ministry. I'm talking of the NAC and the uh, current services, save the one that died in the plane crash, the chief of army staff, including, sorry, save the present uh, 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 chief of army staff. Then he was not chief of army staff. All of them said the same thing. What did Mr. President do? That's why I said on the line that was complicit. What did Mr. President do? He rewarded their inept ineptitude, their malfeasance. He, he rewarded their complicity with ambassadorial appointments. How, 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 how do you explain that? Now you have in Zamfara State, where a criminal, a terrorist on the one third list, in the full glare of security of prisons, and the federal government was to ban. On the one third list was to ban. How do you justify this? Now, if such a thing should happen in the east, or in the south, or even in the west, they would have raided, they would have destroyed that village, that community, if not even the whole state. We know what happened in Lodi. 
We don't have apple in the north, in the east, recently. Then you have, at the the governor of one of those states, who ordered that everybody should vacate the bush, the forest, and proper, uh, what is that thing called again? Counting, that's when you, is the enumeration taken? What was the reaction of the federal government? We all know that human beings don't live in the forest. You have to be a criminal to live in the forest. We all know that. What was the federal government's reaction? That you, as a Nigerian, you have a right to decide where I want to decide. Meanwhile, meanwhile, these are criminals, terrorists, and their hideout, their above, is the forest. You have a government where Bumi who was not acting at the behest of the federal government visited these so-called terrorists. Came out. And when Mr. President said oh, that, that the terrorists should be wiped out, Bumi said that was impossible. Within 24 hours, Bumi responded that this will continue unless there is a rapprochement challenging the federal government, and it has continued. You know, you have a lot of of instances, a whole lot of them. What does it address complicity? The federal government is not willing. And remember, it was the same Buhari who said when they ordered that the security of it should go after the Boko Haram, he said if amnesty could be granted the militants, Amnesty should also be given to these terrorists. This same Buhari was one. The terrorists nominated, then they were referred to as bandits, to speak for them at the negotiation table, although he declined. But it speaks volumes. What is your relationship with them? And it was a governor in the north, a former governor, rather, in the north, who came out to say that the present uh, vice presidential candidate to uh, what is that again, Tinibu, was the one funding this bandit? His predecessor, I think I'm about to share it also, directly accused him and also went further to say that these so called terrorists were imported ahead of the 2015 general election. And don't forget. The notorious comment that uh, Nigerians will swim in their blood and baboons or whatever. You can remember all this. If you imagine all these things. Okay. It is not okay. perfect, my dear brother. All right. Uh -huh. of <laughs> now, back to the insecurity. Unfortunately, because of this level, you had a captain, Kofi, I also remember, you had a captain who was arrested, who was acting in cahoots with this terrorist. What has happened to it? That issue has been swept under the carpet. A, and a soldier was arrested, handcuffed, both hand and legs. The man was to squeal. He was killed. They said he took a gun. A man in handcuffs took a gun from security of protest and shot himself. How ridiculous. Kofi. <laughs> it is the Oswald kind of situation. Don't go out and talk. The Oswald. The man accused of killing uh, JFK, Jared Kennedy, is the same is the same situation. You know, so you can go on and on and on, and that is why everything seems intractable. It is now a gravy train. A lot of I tell you when this man was released, he said, "I'm talking of this man, the one of them that has just released the uh, uh, train victims, one that." Just, those who went, his people who went for his release said, although they requested for a hundred million, what actually got to the terrorists was 900 and something. Because the soldiers they met, they met about two sets. One, the first one said, my friend, give me 200,000 naira there. It's in public domain. That when you get to the terrorists, they will understand. Just say to them that you give to me. Soldiers. The other one now said, oh, we sympathize with you. But my dear, we're in the bush. They just send us to this bush without proper welfare. The government will send you 
They won't pay your allowances. They won't give you this. They won't give you. So please, we are, this is a death trap. Let us enjoy while we are alive. Give us our own. When you go there, the terrorists will understand. So you see, there is that synergy. <laughs> Excuse me. There is that synergy. There is that understanding. So even those you said to go and quell this situation, I'm making a lot of money from it. And I can tell you that their service chiefs are aware. It's like the policeman, the one that was just arrested and dismissed. He was dismissed because he came on air to say it. Otherwise, why will an IG order the dismantling of roadblocks? You have commanders, you have commissioners of police in that state. So you yeah, have federal highways. I do order the standing of roadblock. You still have the roadblock going on. You know what it is, what this combination is in the military. But you, the I do order. So, you see, we are not deceiving. It's a clear case of high blood. <coughs> Excuse me. For the half cup, I'm very sorry. You know, it's a clear case of high blood, high blood pressure of deceptive rhetoric and an anemia of concrete performance. That is what is going on in this country. Hmm. And that is why the security situation yeah. is exacerbated. Because it's, it's, you it's, have an in conclusion. Yeah. In conclusion, Kofi, in conclusion, it was an abacha, a, a general, a former head of state, former chief of army, who said, when you have insecurity in the country that lasts for more than 24 hours, definitely you have the endorsement of a federal government. All right. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite unfortunate. And you've painted a, the picture right there, Oponabo and Kotaria. I mean, not a successful you know, attempt to, uh, that is even even if, if there's been an attempt at all to rescue the uh, Kaduna-bound uh, train kidnap victims. And despite, um, you know, some, some clues as to where they are, you know, this last uh, set of four, three of which uh, were seen before the press, uh, these last set of four uh, were, were freed on the Abuja Kaduna Road, that's where they were dropped. Yeah, it's quite unfortunate. Uh, we just hope for the best, and um, we pray that their families can raise the funds to release them, because that's what it seems like right now. But I mean, remember some some years ago in River State, uh, kidnapping was the order of the day. I mean, you're traveling from uh, Port Harcourt to Oweri. You know, you have to you have to say the Lord's prayer. And then, of course, uh, your family will keep calling you every uh, region. <laughs> yeah. Because between River State and Oweri oh, yeah. was, was a hotbed. And um, not a few, a few people who had been in there and had been captured and released uh, claimed, they claimed that uh, some of the police officers who were, because there was a checkpoint, there were checkpoints around there. A lot of police checkpoints, moving from River State to, to you know, uh, Emo State. They claimed that the officers knew what was going on and it was a business. It was, they had a deal, you know. So... If so these things continue, this. you, you let, can't, let, yeah. as, as, as an addition, as an addition to, to what you just said, I mean, like I said, you're a citizen, citizen journalist, and you're quite confident of what is going on. There are so many things that you cannot even say on air that you know is going on, you know, based on your, your, your findings, you know. But then, let me tell you this. Kofi, do you know that you can carry an AK-47 in your vehicle? Not license. Of course, they can't give you license. AK-47 in your vehicle. All you need to do is have enough money in your, in your pocket. A policeman will arrest you. You give him the money and you go. But carry, uh, what is this other uh, gun? Even a pistol. If you don't bribe it, you're going. They arrest you. And they go and make a public show of it that as if they are working. The authorities are complicit. They are making a whole, it's a gravy trade. They are making a whole lot of money. The greatest business anywhere in the world is the security business. Both legal and illegal. Legal in the sense that just like the former chief of army staff, the service chiefs, they make a lot of money. Let us do this. They don't even want it to end. So that the votes will be coming. That's the truth. Then, when you talk of the illegal aspect of it, the criminals, they collect this ransom and they share. I've just mentioned the captain. I've mentioned other things. Even T.Y. Dan Juma said the military is involved. That is a former chief of army staff, a former defense minister. He won't just be talking. He said the military is involved. T.Y. Dan Juma said so. And that is that much. A security reporter has informed his conviction. 
Now, you can't just dismiss that like that. You can't just, you can't just make a slur of it. It's not possible. It's not possible. It is unfortunate that the country is sinking into the slur of death. All right. As a result of this security situation. Quite okay. Mr. Singletary, we, ha we have to move on. We have to move on because we are out of time. Um, and, uh, I mean, the security situation in the country seems to be taking the chunk of uh, uh, the attention on the front page of the major national uh, dailies. I wish you had more time to look at other stories, but we're pressed for time. And so we would uh, like to thank you very much for joining us today. And we hope that next time you're sitting here to thank you. analyze, um, you know, things will be a bit better. Uh, we can only but hope and uh, we thank can you. only but, but pray. Thank you very much for your time. Opuna Boyngutara is a public affairs analyst and he's been our guest Thank on The you. Breakfast this morning. All right, uh, still The Breakfast. We have more conversations coming up. Of course, uh, when we return, uh, we look at uh, some interesting stories uh, and conversations with our guest analyst right here on the program. But before that, let's check out what happened on this day, 1st of August in history.